There are eight billion. Question. There are eight billion people in the world. The people who have never heard of Jesus do not have dreams of him. Yeah. But there, there definitely okay. are people who have never heard of Jesus, and yeah. they have these visions. They okay. have these dreams. Bart Ehrman and Justin Bass are on the Unbelievable podcast. They're having a debate about Jesus. Did he actually rise from the dead? If he is risen from the dead, shouldn't there be some kind of external, contemporary, modern proof of that? Well, Justin Bass gets into this phenomenon, which is very fascinating, which is the amount of people who are claiming to have seen a vision or a dream of Jesus in the modern era, in 2023. I want to say this as a teaser, because I have a commentary to make here at the end of this video that I'm going to get into in a little bit more depth. And I'm going to give you as a teaser, a little data point here. 25% of Muslims in the Middle East who come to Christ do so having seen him first in a vision or a, or a dream. 25%. With that being said, let's dive into the topic. The fact that Jesus is appearing all over the world, almost every nation, for the last 2,000 years to Hindus, to Buddhists, to Muslims, to Jews, and they're converting, I, I don't know of any other faith that could make such a claim. So this is, this is I think, a unique phenomenon. There, there's even, a, a, I think Bart, Bart's aware of this, because he referenced Philip Wiebe's book, Visions of Jesus, which, which I'm... Uh, had en enjoyed reading in, in preparing uh, in preparation for my book, and and he talks about how there's even a separate study in the psychological understanding of the paranormal and and of, of these type of things called Christic visions because they're so common and there there's so many this is happening so mm. often and so so that that's what what I would say is it's really truly a unique phenomenon with again the person of Jesus so this is just another line of evidence to add to all these others that we've been talking about that I think suggests this Jesus rose from the dead. Okay. But. Well, I don't really have anything to say about it. I mean, you know, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you do, but oh no, I really don't. I mean, because I don't think it's an I don't think it's any evidence of anything. I mean, okay. people have dreams about all sorts of things. It doesn't mean the thing is real. I mean, so I uh, I'm sorry. I have never thought about it, studied it. I, I read this book and it was yeah, it was a good book. It, one. It's very is very weird, very strange. I don't believe it really happened. As you know, the film disappeared. <laughs> well, well, I, yeah, I I don't. But, yeah. but, but he interviewed, <laughs> just so you know, he, he's talking about a film that they believe they saw Jesus. I don't buy that either. Okay. But there was 32 individuals he interviewed that gave very, yeah. people yeah, from yeah, Canada, people from remarkable. Australia, yeah. people from America that gave powerful, I, I was okay. convinced, that but they had the seen the fact people have Jesus. dreams and visions of, you know, something like yeah, Christ. Yeah, well, it's, it's not true that it only happens in Christianity, of course. Okay. Well, yeah. What other Well, it's very famous in the ancient it? world. I mean, people... Uh, in one of the one of the great healing gods of the Greeks was um, um, was Asclepius, and the way the uh, the healing rituals worked is that there would be a, there was a shrine of Asclepius. He was a, a divine being, a Greek divine being who, who could heal people, and people who were had a problem. They had breast cancer, or they had a maimed limb, or they had uh, cancer. They had whatever they had. Uh, they they were blind. They'd go to an Asclepium. It was called Asclepium, and it would uh, and they would. Um, the way it worked is you would go to sleep in there, and you'd spend the and Asclepius would come to the person, and heal them. Uh, and we have abundant testimony, hundreds of of uh, testimonies that this worked. Uh, and we actually have a number of these Asclepia where, that have been dug up by archaeologists that is, they're, they're actually pretty interesting because they would make uh, representations of the body part that got healed. And so you'd have their walls covered with, with breasts okay. and penises and arms and eyes and right. ears, depending on what. And, and so it was all based on uh, a dream cult. And Asclepius isn't the only one. We have all sorts of cults involving Zeus, for example. And so throughout history, of course, there have been lots of cults that claim that, that they're, uh, the person is being you know, dreamed of okay. and, and healing them. Oh, that is fascinating, fascinating you know, history. You know, I've learned a lot about Asclepius. But I just have to ask you, Bart, who has Asclepius appeared to lately? Uh, just last night, I had a really interesting dream. <laughs> and, you know, and it proves that Asclepius is raised from the dead because well, I dreamed about it. Let me it. ask you this. If people, <laughs> if people from all over the world started thinking that Asclepius was appearing to them, or Apollonius Siftiana, or yeah. Moroni, or any of them, yeah. w wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't, wouldn't you go, wow, there may yeah, be something Yeah, that would be something. This. Yeah, that would be something. But it's happening with Jesus. I don't think so. No, 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 it's a fact that it's happening. No, it's, it, not. it's, how many, it's just a, how, it's just whether or not he's you, actually appearing look, to them. There are eight billion question. there are eight billion people in the world. The people who have never heard of Jesus do not have dreams of him. No, uh, one of the examples in my book is Samuel Morris, a, a guy from Libya 
and he he heard the voice of Jesus. He went to Taylor. I don't know if you're to Taylor University. They have a statue for him. They 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 dedicated a whole hall for him. He had never heard of Jesus. He heard the voice of Jesus. He survived this tribal attack. It's an amazing story. I mean, yeah, again, it's amazing. Great. Like Pincus Lapid, you know, Great. you should look into these. Great. These are powerful. Yeah. Yeah. But there there definitely Great. are people who have never heard of Jesus, and yeah. they have these visions. They okay. have these dreams. Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm going to dive in here to an article. This is actually from GotQuestions.org. It has to do with Muslims, dreams, and visions. This idea of if Jesus is risen. Is he still operating in the world today? So there are many reports of Muslims converting to Christianity due to having a dream or experiencing a vision in which Jesus appeared to them. The accounts vary somewhat, but they virtually all have the same aspects in common. One, Jesus appears to them. Two, Jesus tells them to find and speak to a person at a certain time and place. Three, when the Muslim follows Jesus' instructions, he or she finds the person exactly at the right place and time, and the person explains who Jesus is and presents the gospel to them. Four, the Muslim believes that Jesus is the Messiah and Savior and places his or her faith in him, renouncing Islam. Pretty compelling. What are Christians to make of such claims? Considering what happened to the Apostle Paul, there is no reason to doubt such accounts. In Acts chapter 9, Jesus appears to Paul in a vision and told Paul to go to Damascus and wait. Jesus then sent Ananias to Paul. Ananias explained the gospel to Paul, and Paul became a Christian. Paul's life was then transformed. He was changed from a persecutor of Christians to a follower of Jesus who powerfully declared the gospel through much of the Roman world. So I think it's fascinating to look at Paul as kind of a case study example of what is also happening in the Muslim world. Now, the question is, do we need to rely on dreams and visions? Is this something that we should expect or or that we should allow? I, guess, I think what I want to say is like, to, in a sense, give us a crutch. The biblical mandate is very clearly on us, the people of God, to do the work of God in the world, to go out into the world to every nation, tongue, and tribe, preaching the gospel, right? That, that's what's on us. But I think what happens is when there are external factors that restrict that and that make that either incredibly difficult or impossible, like what's happening in the Muslim world, I do think that God actually, in a sense, steps up and works outside of what is normative or what is prescriptive, and he actually loves people so much that he's even willing to to speak to them, to meet them in a vision or in a dream. And so um, this is something to think about, you guys. Christ is risen. He's not just, um, you know, sitting on the throne stagnantly in heaven. He's also working in the world today. He's meeting people today. He's working through the people of God, through his church, but he's also working himself uh, to to reach people's hearts. And this also raises interesting questions when it comes to unreached people groups, people who have yet to have human uh, preachers come to them and preach the gospel. It's actually a fascinating topic. Um, you can see the skeptical mind of Bart Ehrman being so resistant to this idea um, and wanting to, in a typical sense, place Jesus back into the category of myth and, and all of that. Um, but I do think that it's very compelling that, again, 25% of Muslims who come to Christ do so because he came to them first in a vision or a dream. Pretty cool. If you guys like this kind of content, let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all the things, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.